Let us pray. Loving God, you consecrate our lives. You consecrate time. And so bless this time together. Bless the hearing of your word that our minds might be renewed and our lives transformed. Amen. Six days to do all our work. Stop right there. That's hard enough. But there's more. One day, a day for God. No work. But wait, God's done, not done just yet. It's not just us. It's for our children. The people who work for us. The animals who work for us and provide our livelihood. Strangers. And the folks who live all around us who have no idea what this faithful journey we're on is all about. And so I suppose what I'm supposed to do here this morning is offer some kind of wise pastoral counsel about rest. To give you some theological urging why you ought to take some time off while you nod or nod off. And then look at your watch and hope the service doesn't go too long because we all have a lot to do this afternoon. It's true. And so as we wander in this 21st century, 24-7 wilderness, what can I possibly tell you that you don't already know? All work and no play makes Jack a very, very dull boy. It's trite, but it's very true. And the healers of our minds and our bodies are crying out from the mountaintops, crying out in the wilderness, people of God, you are failing at creating healthy boundaries between work, home, and rest. Your eyes are already glazing over. Business literature is full of advice about sharpening the saws. But be honest, right about now, aren't we all just kind of longing to ease our minds by checking our cell phone notifications on the front? And dare I utter a heresy, burnout. Yawn. Let's be clear, work is a wonderful thing. To be happy and joyful in the work that you do is such a blessing and a gift. And work is at the heart of who God is. In the beginning, God was at work. And the Lord is still at work, making all things new. Sacred work leading us into God's promised future, creating and recreating, and the fruit of God's handiwork is all around us. God's work is a blessing. God's creating work for us is a blessing. And because we're created in God's image, work is at the heart of who we are, creating and recreating. And for better or worse, the fruit of our work is all around us. The Lord God Almighty did wondrous works for us and for our salvation, and then the Lord God Almighty rested. He stopped. The one in whose image we are created commands us to remember that. And I suspect everyone here or online within earshot of this sermon is prepared to shrug off, shrug off yet another attempt by another pastor to talk about the importance of days off and time with your loved ones, a vacation, enjoying God's creation, and engaging in activities that give us joy and renew our spirits. Dare I say, self-care. And why not? Why would you listen to me? Why would you listen to Al? Pastors are the most accomplished Sabbath avoiders in creation. Why do we have such disdain for this command? It sounds so lovely. How hard can it be to rest? How long have you got? And yet, of all the Ten Commandments, this, I believe, is one of the hardest to honor. We're doers. We're proud of our doings. We glorify doing. We demand doing of ourselves, and doing that demands doing 
of the people around us. And that is a double-edged sword. Work is a blessing. Creating work is a blessing. Demand for doing can make good things happen. Demand for doing can also make Sabbath seem like an impossible dream. So it's important to remember that God's sacred rest was not a reward for all the drudging work God had done before. It's not a prize for the six days of work. God didn't even justify it. God just did it and blessed it. One commentator put this beautifully, said, God's rest is not God's retirement. God's rest is holy time between sacred work done and sacred work yet to be done. And it's the same for us. It's time set apart, time in between our work that we've done and the sacred work we have yet to do. The possibility of that work becoming sacred is much greater when we take the time to remind ourselves to make it so. And so here's the question, how do we consecrate this in-between time, this Sabbath? And God loves us so much, God gives us a way to start. Remember it. We forget. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember that this is the day the Lord has made, time set apart to remember the creative work that the Lord has done. The Lord who speaks order into chaos, setting boundaries between night and day, land and sea, work and rest. God did that before the self-help shelves were filled with books about boundaries. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made time set apart to remember the liberating work of God, freeing us not from the need to work for our daily bread, but from bondage to meaningless toil. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made time set apart to remember the redemptive work of the Lord, leading and parting the seas, manna for our daily bread, who speaks into the chaos of this borderless wilderness to shape our freedom and, my friends, to protect it, to help us remember who and whose we are. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made time set apart to remember that God created us in freedom to be in the world, but not of it. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made time set apart to remember we are called to serve God's kingdom in faithfulness wherever and whatever the calling of our work. To remember this is the day the Lord has made time set apart to remember the life-giving power of the one in whose image we are created, to remember the healing and saving work of Jesus Christ, and especially today, to remember the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is upon us. So to all of us doers, I say be of good courage. St. Paul is here to help. Because Sabbath rest is more than time to do nothing. Time for recreation, it is that, but it's more than that. Sabbath is time made holy because we set it apart for recreation. Time set apart to allow God, to allow God's spirit to be at work. Time set apart to let ourselves be transformed and for God to renew our minds. That's what we're doing right now. Setting apart time, it's a bold thing to do. Across America, how many people are doing this this morning? Setting apart time to allow God's grace to transform our minds, to transform our relationships. I hope our relationships are different because we were here today to transform how we live, but also to transform how we work. Friends, what if we set apart time in our homes, 
on our way toward tomorrow? What if this afternoon, what if every Sunday afternoon were not just the clouded, burning embers of a week, filled with tasks we hadn't gotten done yet, errands to be done, usually by a weary and heavy-laden parent before tomorrow dawns with Monday dread? What if we just confess that most of us are a long way from having our act together enough to prepare for a Sabbath set apart? where no work happens, where the whole family, even if the family's just one, joins in the preparation so the whole family can join in the Sabbath. What if we commit to trying? It's something we want to encourage one another to honor and embrace as individuals, as families, and as a congregation. On our church calendar, this is the first day of the week. Not the burning embers of the week past, but this is our first day. This is the day when the women went to the tomb in the darkness and discovered that God had transformed the world. This is the day God did the greatest work of all and remembering that God wants us to be transformed by that grace. So what if we live into every Sabbath like it's the first day of our week? A day we can transform how we look at the week ahead. It's the first day. Let it shape the other days. The first day we can enter our week with our minds not conformed to this world. Our spirits not conformed to this world. And my friends, if we do that, our work need not be conformed to this world. Our lives can be transformed because we have given God time to renew our minds. And then our doings can be transformed into sacred work, no matter what they are. The sacred work we do together, one beautiful commentator described it as spinning a thread strong enough for others to weave that the work we do affects the work we all do. As members of one body, by the grace and with the gifts that God gives us from the simplest to the most extraordinary, what if we set apart time to discover them? We have gifts that are yet to be revealed in our lives. Our children have gifts yet to be discovered. What if we set apart time to discover them and nurture them? And then what if we set apart time to discover how to use them to God's glory? And what if we set apart time at home? What if today in our homes we remember ourselves as a family? Remember ourselves with our friends. We're remembering ourselves here this morning. What if we help our children to remember that they are beloved children of God before they do anything? That could change the way they are and we are, and that might change what we do and how we do what we do all week. What if we, as we remember with one another, here and at home and at work, in the checkout line at the grocery store, help each other to renew this sense that we are beloved? What if we remember ourselves as one body in Christ? In familiar ways? And I so look forward to the new ways we will do that, to discover the gifts that we have and how we can use them to God's glory. God sends us into creation, this beautiful creation we have been given, knowing that our faithfulness will be tested every single day. And so God gives us sacred time each week to remember who God is, what God has done, who we are, and to shape how we do what we do. To remember ourselves as the body of Christ before we go out into the world. Friends, I think as we remember ourselves in the days to come. As we remember ourselves 
as members of our community, as we remember ourselves as citizens of our country, as we remember ourselves as people of God in the world, God will touch the world with the work that we do. And God can transform the world with our rest, with time set apart to allow our spirits to be renewed. And it's through that sacred time on the way we remember where we're going. Wow, that's interesting. Sacred time on the way to what? To being creators with God, workers with God, children of God, fulfilling an ancient promise that through the children of God, all the world will be blessed. Amen.